our word for today on this Wednesday of the fifth week of Lent. This Wednesday, March the 20th, our word for today is worship. Worship our word for today. And here to talk about it, Deacon Dan Brer. Good morning, Deacon Dan. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Ron. Howdy. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. I will be at the uh, Fish Fry at St. Rose on Friday night. Oh, great. Fabulous. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun to connect with you. Actually, I'm going to give a little plug here. Uh, Friday night at 7 o'clock at St. Rose, the 8th grade class from the school always every year does a mime of the Stations of the Cross, um, painted with white faces and all. Really? Um, Yeah, my wife teaches 8th grade, and she helps to direct the group, and so they'll be putting on that performance in the church at 7 o'clock. Hmm. Um, and it's a beautiful, beautiful rendition of the Stations of the Cross. So anybody who comes to the fish fry can stick around maybe and, and, and go to that service at 7 o'clock. Perfect. Great. Um, so today we have uh, a really interesting, you know, the, the, the first reading from the book of Daniel, uh, which I know that um, Dave said it's one of his favorites. It's certainly one of mine. I think because my name is Daniel, I just, uh, I'm just i attracted to the book of Daniel. Mm-hmm. I've, I've done a lot of reading and studying over the years. But uh, the first reading really gets to the heart of how far are you willing to go to prove your love of God? Um, So it's that famous story of the three men who refuse to bow to the wishes of the king. The king has a golden statue and says, you know, bow to this um, false pagan god and I'll save your life. And they just refuse to do that. Um, And it it kind of brings up a a really interesting sort of etymology, if you will, of words. That are, that are used in this reading and other places in the gospel. So um, the Hebrew word that is used in this reading in the original text is, uh, is uh, segid, and segid means to do homage. So the, the king is insisting that they do homage, which we then translate to the word worship. But the Greek equivalent of that same word is proskinesis, and proskinesis means to lay prostrate, to kiss the ground or a body part of the one who is being worshipped. That was a customary way to adore or show respect in the ancient religious rites uh, of Romans and Greeks. So we see this word, this proskinesis, appear multiple times in the Gospels. Um, One of the times is in Matthew's Gospel in chapter 2, where it talks about the wise men coming to see Jesus. And it says, upon entering the house, they did him proskinesis. Hmm. They worshipped him. They they paid him homage. And then later in John chapter 9, verse 38, and we actually just heard this two weeks ago on the Sunday reading, the story of the blind man who's being healed. Mm-hmm. And Jesus asked him, do you believe in the Son of Man? And the man says, yes, I do. And then it says, and then he worshipped him, and then he proskinesis him. So we can kind of imagine that man doing what would have been done at that time, laying prostrate on the ground and kissing Jesus' feet. Um, but we see the word another time, and this is where I think it really gets interesting. We see that same word, that word for worship, appear in Luke's gospel when Jesus is tempted by the devil, which again we heard at the beginning of Lent. The devil tells him that all power and glory will be Jesus's if he would just worship him. He uses that same word, proskinesis. And Jesus replies with a paraphrase of Deuteronomy chapter 6. He says, which actually Deuteronomy chapter 6 says, the Lord your God shall you fear, him shall you serve, and his name shall you swear. But Jesus' interpretation of it, what he tells the devil is that, that the book of Deuteronomy says that God alone so shall you worship. But it actually doesn't say worship. It doesn't use the word segid. What Jesus is doing is he is basically using the words serve and worship interchangeably. That's really kind of a deep thing, because what he's really saying is, yes, we go to Holy Mass, and we participate in the holiest, in the highest form of worship, but we also recognize that acting honorably to serve other people is to worship. And so the three men in Daniel are refusing to bow to that golden statue. It doesn't just mean that they refuse to prostrate themselves. It also means they refuse to serve anyone but God himself. So they have this unshakable faith that, that, that even the, uh, uh, the threat of death is not going to keep them from serving their God, from serving one another. Um, and so the reading ends with the king blessing him, uh, himself, uh, 
sort of uh, bless, well, the king himself is blessing God because these men have dis, would rather disobey him than, than and, and note here's the important wording. The king says, you would rather disobey me than to serve or worship anyone except your own God. So even the king is using serve and worship interchangeably. Hmm. I just think that that's a really important thing to keep in mind here, that we effectively worship God by serving God and one another. And, and so it really is all about service. And it kind of raises the question today as we come closer to the end of Lent is, you know, how far are we willing to go to show our faith? And what do we serve? Is it, the, is it God alone that we serve or is something keeping us from serving him? Wow, what a great insight. I will never look at those readings the same way again. Uh, beautiful, uh, Deacon Dan. I always learn so much when you're on. So uh, Sigid and Prosthenesis, right? Sigid and Prosthenesis, correct. Wow. The Amazing. Hebrew word and the Greek word, which, which are laced throughout uh, the Bible. Awesome. Thank you so much, Deacon Dan Brayer, and we look forward to seeing you Friday night at the uh, Fish Fry at St. Rose, and of course, uh, that uh, wonderful station's uh, in mind. Wow. Great. Thank you. Can't wait. Have a great day. You too. Thanks for joining us today on Morning Offering.